Okay, welcome to uh, Watercolor Studio 42. And uh, you know, normally when uh, you're thinking about art, you think about things that are attractive, this, that, you know, flowers and beautiful lakes and sunsets and all that type of thing. And uh, so I, I'm, I, I'm thinking of uh, today going in the opposite direction a little bit because the other day I was looking around the yard and uh, uh, I must admit uh, things are getting run down. The grass is taller. We keep the grass cut short in the front where it shows the most, but a lot of things, the branches uh, are broken off. We've had a lot of windy days and whatnot. And uh, so then I was looking at the, uh, the, the uh, I guess you call it fencing or uh, lattice work that, that goes underneath the, the deck, you know, to close it in. And it's getting kind of broken down. The door is kind of off its hinges a little bit. It, it's in bad shape and it needs some repair. And of course, anything that's wooden is, and it's outdoors all the time, it's, it's going to be exposed to the elements. So those things do uh, uh, break down after a while. And anything that's metal gets rusty, you know, that type of thing. So what I'm going to be doing today is just the opposite of uh, something that's very attractive. Now out front and on the side of the house, we've got beautiful flowers. My wife did a beautiful job with uh, planting flowers and things that are all in bloom, you know, the uh, lilies and so forth. And, uh, but then there's areas, like I said, around where the deck is kind of getting a little bit beat. And uh, I've talked to uh, a carpenter about kind of getting it repaired. That's one thing I wish I was a little bit better at, uh, is carpentry work. But it seems like I never have the right tools to do certain projects. So I depend on plumbers and carpenters and whoever. Uh, I'll let the professionals kind of do that for me. And I can only say the tools that I have to, uh, that, uh, that I use for my profession, uh, I do have those. I've got plenty of brushes, plenty of pencils, plenty of paint, paper, you name it. Uh, probably too much of everything. And <laughs> so claims my wife. Anyways, uh, but uh, uh, I thought I'd do something that's a little bit different today. It's taking a uh, broken down uh, kind of uh, lattice woodwork that, that cl closed in the porch, or not the porch so much, but uh, the deck. And uh, so uh, I'm going to see if I can make a work of art out of it, okay? So this should be interesting. Now what I've done at random is just laid uh, one inch tape, just regular masking tape, across uh, my uh, uh, paper, my painting surface, and uh, uh, at random, just at random, and uh, uh, and I'm going to see what I can do with it and make it into sort of a work of art. It's going to be a little bit varied. Uh, if I paint, try, try to do the actual colors and some of the objects that might be uh, stored underneath there, uh, it, it might be a little bit tricky, but we'll see what happens anyways. So I'm going to start off with uh, maybe some of my yellow. I always start off with ye uh, yellow, uh, the lighter colors. And uh, I guess you could use uh, just about a mid-side brush. Uh, something like this would be fine. This is, uh, happens to be about a 17, I guess, uh, round brush. And I'm going to just wet the paper just a little bit in and around the tape. And I just put, the, like I said, I put masking tape on the paper, just at random, just, you know, I'm not even thinking about it. I think I've got some diagonals in there, how the lattice work, you know, works for this type of fencing. I guess they call it fencing, I don't know. You see it a lot when people want to close in the, the under part of the porches and, and deck or whatever. So we just wet the paper a little bit here. Don't want to make, get it too saturated, just to loosen up the, uh, the 
fiber, the paper a little bit. Now, usually I do paint things, come to think of it, I, I do paint things that are older, uh, kind of nostalgic, uh, uh, traditional things like covered bridges and old bonds and, and, and whatever, you know, comes across. And uh, things like that. One time we took a trip years ago, went up to Vermont, and up there there's a, there's a lot of uh, farms that kind of, you know, went out of business and so forth. And uh, there was a, a lot of old barns around, and every time I come across an old barn, I'd get out take a picture and my wife said you know that's fine you're taking a picture of all these old bonds old this old that but how about taking a picture of the children you know <laughs> oh okay <laughs> so so I included some of the pictures uh, with my children and my wife of course <laughs> but uh, it was so funny because I was attracted to these old things old tractors, old plows, <laughs> the uh, old stone walls, you know, all those things out there. And it was it kind of funny. She said, why don't you take a picture of the kids once in a while? She was right. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I don't know. It's just a thing I have with rustic things, you know. I like old boats, too, you know, the rusty boats and stuff like that. Okay, I think I've got enough wet on there for now. Um, if, if it gets a little bit too wet, what I do is just pat it a little bit. Kind of pick up some of the moisture here. Okay. Now I mentioned starting off with, uh, <laughs> I got some blue paint on it already. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be kind of that way anyway. One of those things, right? All right, here we go. We'll put some yellow there. Now, I'm going to just paint in some of these areas that, uh, where the tape has left kind of some shapes. And it's a distribution of color here. Distribution of color. I, I tell everybody, every, when I paint a picture, I jump around anyways when I'm painting. Now sometimes the paint's gonna be a little bit darker in places if I haven't uh, put too much water on the brush, you'll get bright yellows and let's see, I've got three yellows, okay. How about, uh, here's four, and then a little five over there, how's that? Is that an opening? Uh, a little tiny shape in there, I think. <laughs> Okay, now, uh, let's keep, wipe the brush off a little bit, get most of that paint out. And I'm gonna move on to, uh, let's try some red. And I don't mind taking some of the red and hitting it in the, uh, some of the uh, yellow that I have on the palette there. See what I can do with that. Okay. Get some red there. Oh, uh, see where else? How about red up here? There we go. I'll put a little bit more. We can make make it darker too. I could use some of this other shade of red. I have uh, sort of a lizard crimson. Well, make it a little bit different color shade of red. Okay. Here we go. Now, when I put these colors in, I can also go back and hit them a little bit. Like put a, if I want a different shade of red here, I can drop drop it in. That's that's a little bit darker there. Put a little bit of, you know, give give every area a little bit of a distribution of color. What have we got? One, two, three, four, right? Let's find another shape. Oh, let's put another red up in there. 
So put a dash of that in there. Okay, now we got five. Okay, now moving right along, let's clean the brush off here. Now, what I've been doing is using these primary colors lately. I don't know why. I start off with primary colors, you know, your yellow, uh, red, and blue. So let's put a little bit of blue up in here. Let's put a little bit of blue over here. And that can run into the red. So now you're changing colors here, mixing colors on the paper. You know, uh, the uh, blue going into the red t turns a little bit purple. All right, here we go. I left that open there a little bit too. What I can do with that's one, two. Let's put a little bit more blue in over here. Let's see, that, ooh, that's one big shape, isn't it? Well, why don't I do this? Why don't I just put some blue in there? And then thin it out. Thin it out, thin it out. Not so much um, paint on the brush, but make a softer blue coming down through here. And that fills that area in. And let's see what else. I want to make sure I get I don't miss anything. Let's fill, fill that little corner in there. Have that kind of change color a little bit. Blue with the uh, red. What else? Anything else up here? All right. Let's see. Tape there. Tape here. Let's try. Let's put a little bit of that blue right in. Have that blend into the uh, red here. It's kind of. Remember, I, in the beginning, I wet the paper, so you're going to have uh, colors kind of running into each other, which is fine. I don't mind that at all. Let's see, how many blues? One, two, three, ah, let's we'll put a Well, that's kind of close to the next one. Why don't we try something else here? Uh, yeah, try a little bit of that raw sienna. Now, if I use a little bit of raw sienna, it still has a, some blue on the brush, so that's uh, turning a little bit, kind of greenish in a way. You know, the uh, blue and yellow turns mixed green. We'll go over that a little stronger. And let's repeat that color up in here somewhere. How's that? And uh, again, another empty spot somewhere. Where are we? Uh, tough looking through the tape here. Okay. Let's make that a little bit heavier. Okay, right over here. Now, let's see. I think I've got most everything filled in. Just to make sure. I want to make sure I do the uh, outside edges so I have a little sort of a uh, um, improvised mat there. White white frame or white mat rather around it. Here we go, something like that. Uh, let's dash a little bit of that raw sienna in here. So, sort of makes things look a little bit more gold. And I'm I'm trying to make it look rustic. <laughs> we'll say it. <laughs> we'll pretend it's rusty. Okay. I always put a little bit of brown in there too. To really make it look darker. Whoops, see the at the edge of the water cup here. Yeah, a little bit in there, a little bit up in here. Kind of distribution of color. So actually you're doing this almost like you would, sort of like uh, uh, planning a, a, a painting, you know, an abstract painting of sorts. And uh, so uh, the finale is when we pull the tape off. See what we've got. All right. I think I've got everything covered here. Sometimes I let some white show through. That's that's okay. Let's see a little bit into there, a little bit of that into here, a little bit over here, a 
little bit coming into here. So actually, this is kind of a hodgepodge uh, just distribution of color at random. And uh, it may come out interesting when you pull the tape off. It'll clean it up a bit anyways. Okay. Now normally, normally uh, if you wanted to spend a lot of time or had a lot of time, you could tr probably be in between there, uh, in between the lattice work of the wood. You could probably show some objects back there. Now, what I store sometimes is uh, pieces of lumber and things like that, uh, cans, uh, gas cans or whatever, oil cans, and maybe some tools that I use, uh, shovels and whatnot. I store a few things un underneath the uh, the deck. Uh, so, okay, if I want to make that dark or not, just a little bit in there. Kind of, now it's turning reddish, like a bird sienna, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting, I guess. <laughs> Hope. I gotta make sure I get all, all these little, tr little edges filled in. Probably the tape is there, it's okay. Looks like I filled in most everything around the outside. Yeah. Now, we, um, we have to uh, reflect back. If, if you've got things that are, have been set in there for a long t period of time, uh, the, 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 they're going to collect dust, no, um, no matter where it is. In, inside your house, everything collects uh, dust over a period of time. And uh, that's why a lot of times if people know they're going to be away for the winter, they cover everything with, uh, you know, cloth, bedspreads and all that, just to, just to keep the dust off of, uh, you know, the furniture. And so, there's going to be that around here, um, maybe. Um, another thing you got, I've got to notice is the uh, bugs and things are starting to take over. So uh, you're going to see like maybe spider webs and things like that in there. Um, you know, just to add to the decoration here. Uh, I'm checking out the area, see what what else we might need. I think actually it looks. Fairly well. I could go a little bit darker with the red up in here. Why don't we do that? Just a little deeper up near the top there. And uh, look at that. Now, what I'm doing here is also stalling for time. I want this to dry out a little bit more. <laughs> so uh, things dry out pretty well with the studio lights, and uh, so it won't take too long. But. Uh, I'm just kind of taking some time because I may want to come back into this with uh, my marker. I've got a, br a brown per permanent marker and I've got my black per uh, marker. They have uh, colored markers also that you can use. Um, I don't know if I want to add a little bit of that in there. Whatever you put in there, you kind of repeat it somewhere else kind of a distribution of the color. How are we doing? How are we doing? It looks pretty good. So it's just a matter of letting it settle in and dry a little bit more before I can go on um, putting any other detail in. Now, as I was mentioning, you can, you can show where uh, maybe termites have got into the wood or uh, bugs and things uh, uh, have... Uh, chewed into it or whatever might happen. Just the uh, general deterioration of the, uh, the material itself, wood, you know. Uh, even though it's been maybe treated, it, it, it sort of slows down the deterioration, but it, it's not, uh, it's not gonna save it completely. I'm gonna darken that little triangle up there. I don't know what to put some of this in. Oh, that's too, maybe too dark. I don't know if I want to get into that. Just 
too much. We're going to use the marker. We'll get some dark color in it that way. So what I'm trying to do is get this thing to dry. And uh, it looks pretty good. So anyways, so while I'm letting this one set up, I just happened to do one the other day. And uh, we'll move this back, I'll show you what, what I did the other day with this one. Now don't be shocked. <laughs> this, this is what I ended up with the other day, okay? Here's all the kind of just broken lattice work a little bit. And I used the colors, basically my primary colors, and I spat it on it. And uh, when it gets dry enough, you can use a marker and you can draw in some web lines, you know, cobweb in there. You can put little bugs on here, whatever you want, crawling around on the wood, uh, things like that. I didn't do too much of the, um, the background as far as what you could probably see through there. I just kept everything. But the, what, what, what you'd see through there was just some of the stuff that I stored in there and it just sat there for quite a while. I used to saw a piece of the wood thinking I'd use it somewhere along the line, but it's still <laughs> still setting there. So anyway, so that this is what we're waiting for. This is what we're waiting for that to dry. So I don't know if you consider this a work of art. I've tried to think of a title for it, you know, like uh, uh, decay or negligence or uh, uh, I've seen better days, you know, uh, some sort of catchy little title that you'd put on some of this. And uh, I, I've been thinking maybe I could look at, through other areas uh, of, uh, you know, stuff that you've collected over the years and piled up here, there, and so forth. I've had my garage cleaned out once and it's already filling up again, but, you know, We've been there quite a few years, so I'm a kind of a pack rat a little bit. So I tend to save too much, save, save things. Uh, oh, maybe I can use it somewhere, but you never get around to it. So we'll see what we have. I think we're drying out pretty well. We're getting there. Now, um, what, what I can do now is I can uh, maybe if it dries out a little bit more, uh, probably remove some of the tape and start working on some of the textures uh, of the uh, wood. And I did that with a, with a, a pen, pen and ink, and the markers and so forth, and some of the um, uh, whatever you have handy, make it look kind of rough looking. Okay. I think we're, I'm not going to take the outside off yet, but let's take some of this up. See what we have. I'm going to put, I'm going to stick that all over the table. Let's put a towel down here, paper, napkin, whatever. Okay, where are we? We'll take some of this off. Now, when I put this masking tape on, I just did it at random, so I don't know what in the world it will look like. Just, I did this the same way, you know, just at random, it looks like it's kind of broken and bent and twisted, which it is for the most part. It needs some work. Even the door, it had a little door on it, even that's sort of separated away from the cement blocks and things. So you can see what I'm doing here is just taking the tape off. I don't think it matters too much if I mess it up because I'm going to make it look kind of old to begin with. There we go. So you can see the lattice work is a little, a little bit broken up purposely for this particular project here. But what I was saying anyways, that uh, 
the subject doesn't have to be anything that's you know beautiful. You don't have to have beautiful flowers. You don't have to go to Niagara Falls or the Grand Canyon to do a work of art. You just need some masking tape and some paint and a brush and go to it. Even the, even the the uh, masking tape strips kind of look kind of interesting too. The way the paints. Paint got on those. I'm not going to save them though. But you know, over the years, you, you kind of you save a lot of stuff, and um, things that uh, you think you you can use sometime, but you never get around to it. You know, get an idea where we're going. Um, I don't want to mess up this. I don't know why I'm worrying about it because it's supposed to look uh, kind of worn out anyways, but nevertheless. I think I got most of all the tape off inside here. So there's the broken lattice work. I made this a little bit more broken up than they did this. I, this one here, I left uh, some of the strips uh, longer and kind of over, overlaid them, you know, under and over and so forth. So I, I kind of broke it up a little bit more. So now, here we are. Now, what I did with this one here, I took my ruler and uh, a marker, and I kind of did the edges of uh, the uh, lattice. Let's see if I can find a, I got a big marker. Let's try this one for now. I can even use brown. Why don't we try the brown? My, the lattice that I have on my deck, or underneath the deck, I should say, is really, um, uh, the, the natural wood, and it just just colors. I just let it just color itself. And sometimes I think I used to treat it a little bit more, so it wouldn't. Uh, just, just, yeah, I just found another piece of tape I didn't catch. Okay, we'll take that off. There you go. And uh, now, what I'm doing here is just taking my ruler and putting it on the edge of some of this lattice work and uh, kind of drawing it roughly a, somewhat of a straight line. And what it does, it, it just shows, makes the wood show up a little bit more. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Did a nice work of art there. <laughs> All taped up. Okay, let's see if we can get this here. Some of this. All right. So th this is something that is f it's kind of fun to do. And, you know, if you do something that's worn out and old, you, you don't feel so, so bad about, you know, if you kind of spill some paint on it because maybe it would look better that way. <laughs> you, know, you never know. In the world of art, Everybody's coming up with a different way of doing things or trying to do different things. You know, it's awful hard. See, see how I'm kind of making those uh, lattice, the wood uh, jump out a little bit by outlining it with the uh, marker. I use a permanent marker, so if you, uh, if you do happen to get paint on it, it won't hurt it. It won't smudge. Let's go down the side here, just turn it around a bit. Now, I, if I go off a line here or there, probably it's not going to be that noticeable by the time I get through. But this is something that you can do 
and not worry about messing it up because uh, that's, that's what the subject's all about. Decay, negligence, whatever title you want to give it. Yeah. So do a little bit over in here. Now these lines can also be made uh, double, you know, just make them uh, not the same, same width. I've got a larger marker that could do that too. Just use a bigger, uh, bigger marker. Now if I want to make this uh, kind of dented in here the way it is, that's okay. You can do that. Just make it look like it's, you know, the wood's kind of decaying, so you, you can perfectly make some bumps in it. Sometimes the paint, you know, you used to worry about the paint getting underneath the tape. Well, actually, in reality, if it does get underneath the tape, that's okay. Here we go. Whoops, that's all right. Just make it look like the wood's kind of broken there. It has a few bites in it, a few dents here and there. You see how that works? So uh, you can have a lot of fun with this. What I, what I want to uh, try to do is do something that you don't have to be too fussy fussy about and uh, because uh, fussy work is one thing but, but to me it's tedious work too you try to make everything look so perfect you know this this if you goof up a little bit here or there you can just say oh that's where the wood was falling apart or something you know okay you'll see what I I'm going to be doing after I get through with some of this outlining. I think I got most of it. Maybe. You can see how it shows up a little bit now. That gets a little bit fuzzy through here. I can pr purposely do that freehand. I don't need a rule for that. I can do, that's so bumpy in there that I can actually make that look all broken up to begin with. Like all of this rough edge here. I just do that freehand, just go around it with a marker. Okay, see how that works? And uh, let's go down here. Made that a little bit crooked. You really don't need a rule. You could probably do a lot of this freehand. Um, probably do it a little faster. Let's make this kind of shoot up here a little bit. This can be shoot up a little, quite a bit. Let's get that in there. Yeah. A little speck showing. Okay, that looked kind of bumpy there. Uh, yep. I guess I got a lot of it. Now let's make this look like it's kind of shoot up here. Yeah. Now, if I do some of that, I have to do uh, a little bit somewhere else. This can be a little bit shoot up here. I'm just doing this without the ruler. Probably do just as well. Make this edge look shoot up there. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, yeah, I see. That. I'll make that broken off here. And this could be a real distorted piece of something. I don't know what we could do with that. Let's see if I can bring that across, close that in. Make that a little bit bumpy in here. Oh my gosh, it's a real bumpy area. Really make that bu bumpy through here. 
that's what's happening to the wood. You know, it's getting a little bit chewed up here. A little bit bumpy. Uh, yeah. So now, this this is a a work of art, right? So I could t take this a lot of liberty with it, I guess. Maybe not a lot of liberty, but a little bit. Now I could use a ruler on that, but I would just I would just do that in a freehand. That's really shoot up in right there. Finish this off here. Make that to look like it's broken there. Okay. Now, uh, another thing you could do, you could show maybe where it was stapled or, or nailed at one time, put a little t uh, nail, because it's going to be rusty. And you look rusty, let's fill that in across there. As you go along, you'll find areas that you can kind of work on a little bit more, um, make it look a little bit bumpier. I say, what, what did I do with this one? Okay, I think some of these thin lines, I use a regular pen, a thin pen. You could use a pencil if you wanted to. Uh, this, is just, this is just a thin, thinner marker, but it has a, you know, you can put some scratchy stuff in there. Maybe some of the, the grain of the wood. It's kind of run along here. Whatever. This would be very loose. Very loose. But you get you can give it that type of treatment. You can show a larger holes in this. Make some bigger holes here and there. Fill that in. There you go. So you can see how free it can be with with this, you know? Really, when you st stop and think about it, you, you can keep this very loose and free. Um, you can p show a uh, little bit of a tint on the wood. Uh, I happen to use uh, some soft blue in there. I use a lot more blue in this one than I did uh, with the one I'm doing now. But like, if you wanted to tint it, probably if you wanted to make it look more like the wood, I would just use some of that um, uh, raw sienna that I have. Take some of that raw sienna and take a little bit of my uh, um, paint gray or sepia, either one, it doesn't matter. And uh, just just run some of that over. Take a bigger brush and just put some texture in there. You could call it shading or whatever you want to call it. Uh, just do it very spontaneous, so don't spend a lot of time being fussy. Yes, drop it in. Do something like that. This is actually the, the color of the wood. It isn't really white, like uh, not white like the paper here. Now that could be applied very, very quickly. No fussy work. Oops, got some yellow on there. Put some yellow in this one then. Make it look like it's supposed to be there. You know, so you can see how that that could be filled in. How am I doing on time? Not too bad, huh? Let's see what we got here. Now I, I've mentioned before uh, some of these uh, uh, activities and, and demos that I do are things that can be done fairly spontaneous. Now, there are certain subjects that you do have to 
be fussy with. You know, if you're doing a portrait, or if you're doing a, any, well, a portrait of a person or a dog or a cat, those things slow you down. You really have to spend a little bit more time with certain subjects. Anything that's uh, very f delicate and fancy. You can't do what I'm doing now. I'm just, just kind of going over this very quickly. Bring it in from the outside out. Get it from the outside. You don't want the white going into the white. Color that. Pour it in. Very spontaneous. Yeah. Get the idea how that works. Just put a little bit more of that yellow up in here. It's not really yellow, it's a uh, raw sienna. Okay. Get the idea of that. Now you can spend a little bit more time with that if you want. Um, I'm going to repeat some of that yellow right in this area here. Let's put more yellow in there. I've got to get that, that filled in. I don't want to see too much white, white in there. Now, if this was re in reality not a work of art, or trying to make it look like a work of art, uh, all of that background in there would be all darker, you know? kind of gloom and doom, you know, with all that junky stuff in there. Now you can have a few little ants or bugs crawling around on the wood. Whatever. I get that kind of strong up there with yellow. See, even, even though it's supposed to be just at random, you still have to apply some of the rules of art, like distribution of color, make it balance, and so forth. You don't want one area to be too light and get too much attention, so you just quiet it down a little bit, you know, so it's not so noticeable. Even that little spot there. And I like to turn my work around, look at it. Something like this, you can almost hang it up any way, vertically or horizontally or whatever. Okay, now, uh, some of the finishing touches. I can take uh, my pen again, if, uh, if this is dry, and now I can start putting in some cobwebs. So let's have something going in here. Something going across through here. Some of the webs. Something here. Now, usually the webs you do them a little bit fancier, but I'm doing it quicker. Okay, something in here, cobwebs. Okay, one, two, three places. Um, oh, I mean, when you talk about webs, the spiders and all that, they, they get into the cellars wicked. If you, if you uh, don't uh, clean up the corners, sometimes you get all these webs forming in, in your basements. I'm talking about basements that are, they're not really finished in the rooms. They're not that uh, fancy, but still just the, you know, the cement walls and all that. Some web webs hanging down through here. So, yeah, we have distribution of cobwebs and whatnot. So now, the idea is to make this kind of look as if it's sort of uh, a neglected area, and um, the colors are softer here than uh, I've come come in on this one a little bit heavier with the color. This is a lot softer. That doesn't mean to say you can't do that one a little bit, you know, more um, stronger. You can always work on it and build it up. Now I'm going to take the uh, the outside here. 
I always try to make this so it peels, the tape peels back easier. Famous last words. Ooh, boy, I hear this. Well, we'll start somewhere else. If I can get it started here. Wow. Either I'm doing this wrong or the tape is extremely, oops, I'm tearing the paper there. Let's see if I try to get this corner started. Here we go. Once you get it started, it's okay. So you don't damage the, uh, the paper too much. You just tear it on an angle. Whoa, I think I took that corner off. Well, we'll get that a little bit later. Maybe, yeah, doctor it up a little bit. Sometimes if, you, if you're gonna mat this, you can bump the edges up and, and, and uh, not mat it. Well, the mat would cover that anyways if you use the actual mat. But um, you could also mount this. And sometimes what I purpose do, do when I mount something is purposely bump up the edges. In other words, you make it look like it intended to be that way, no matter what. Okay, let's get, come down the side here. Oh, that's tough stuff. That tape is really good. Okay, thought I had a piece of tape in there. Okay, you could call this painting abandoned or neglected. Sometimes you go into an old building, sometimes an old barn. Well, here we go. Sometimes you go into the, an old building, a barn, and, and boy, is, is it kind of beat up. Everything in there gets rusty. Now, what I was talking about here is that this is a false uh, mat, but see, if you tore a uh, place out, you could do it all the way around in different areas, and it would, it, it would look as if it, you purposely wanted it to be that way. I'll show you what I mean. Whoops, I don't want to get too close to that edge. Yeah, so. Take some bites out of it. I'm showing you all the tricks of the trades here, matting and mounting. But I had a teacher one time in college, and she used to say, you, 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 you want to show the person the whole piece of artwork so you, you, uh, you, you would uh, not put a mat on it. You just sell it the way it is or show it to her. mount it so that they could see the complete piece of paper. There we go. I don't know how much I have to tear out of this. Give, give you the idea it's supposed to be that way. Uh, and so that makes it look a little chewed up. Now another thing you can do, you could take, um, if you want to make this look even uh, older, sometimes I take some chalk, you know, and put, I put the chalk, wear gloves, it's a little bit uh, not so rough on your f uh, fingers, but uh, just go over it and smudge it with uh, some uh, chalk dust and make it even a little bit more rustier looking. Oops, don't want to tear up in them too much. So you could keep tearing around this until you get all rough and chewed up. <laughs> but see, this way, it makes it look like you intended to do that. And uh, which isn't, it's okay. I mean, what you intended to do might be better. Or what you didn't intend to do, I should say, might look better. Yeah, that, and then you put that, maybe another background around that or whatever, and uh, f uh, put it in a frame and whatnot. And you got uh, 
a very rustic uh, lattice work. And the idea came from underneath your, your deck on your house. So you look around, look for rusty hinges, things like that. And you'll find that they show up in, in the strangest places, in museums and so forth. And some people just specialize in rusty, rusty, rusty everything. Uh, another thing that's interesting to do is a musical instrument, you know, the uh, violins, uh, the shapes of violins, and uh, guitars, trumpets, saxophones, musical instruments. See how that works? Now, this one here, um, obviously I didn't put the tape around it to use it, uh, like a false mat. So if I was going to uh, put this inside of a frame, you know, cover it with glass and whatnot, I'd probably put a, a, a real mat around it, cut out a mat and put it around the edges here, then drop that into the uh, frame. And usually with watercolor, you always keep it protected by putting a glass over it but there's real glass or plexiglass, something to, to, to protect it. Because the watercolor, just as soon as you wet it, it reactivates and the colors run. Now in this case, the subject is such that you don't even worry about that because you want to make it look kind of smudgy and old and whatnot anyway, so uh, you don't have to worry about it. But if you do that, if you, if you put something, a smudge here, then you have to put it a smudge somewhere else so that it looks like you intended it to be that way. You know, and it's the same way with anything. If I did a, a painting and I made everything uh, sort of, you know, straight and right, right, right up and all that, proper, prim and proper, and then all of a sudden I, I put a tree in there that's all, you know, broken down and it would kind of take away from that nice aesthetic uh, look that it might have. So, here you go. So, um, the bottom line is, look around. Doesn't have to be something real fancy. Doesn't have to be always fancy. Although, um, in, in my yard, I have some beautiful flowers. And yeah, do flowers, do that, but then, look around and see if there's some other spot where something is grown up over, you know, like uh, sometimes a, a, a bush or something gets tangled with some other growth that gets into it and all that. So, because Mother Nature, you know, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, plant itself out very well. Where the seed drops, the thing grows, I guess. That's how they talk about it. And here's the tape that I tore off. That's another, <laughs> that's another artwork in itself. You can, you can uh, uh, paint some tape and then put, stick the paper onto a, a background and, and make something, a design out of that, masking tape uh, design. You, a combination of watercolor and tape. So you got some good ideas there. So anyhow, um, I'm kind of running out of time today, but uh, it's good to uh, get back and do some art. And remember, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go to Niagara Falls to be able to paint a, a waterfall, you know, kind of look through some of those magazines. I get Country Magazine, I get the uh, American Artist, and uh, a few more other art books, but I've had to cut back because I've got to kind of reduce all that extra stuff I've got around. So, um, and uh, clean up a little bit. But uh, uh, there are a lot of good magazines that have some nice pictures in them. Um, I, uh, for years I've been getting that country magazine and um, it's put out by uh, it's the same company that does Birds in Bloom, I believe. The Birds in Bloom is fine. The only trouble now, I'm oversaturated with too many, too many birds and birdhouses and 
and uh, uh, you know flowers and pictures of flowers and whatnot. So anyhow, brushes up, and uh, we'll s see you next time. I happen to be not a brush. Uh, now we can brush up. Okay. So have a good week. Take care now.